uh, the connection I'm trying to make between bit depth and the number of shades of gray that are possible in your image is very important because the higher your bit depth, the longer scale of contrast becomes possible. So as your bit depth increases, your contrast scale also increases. So you get a longer scale contrast as a possibility with an increase in the bit depth. And I'll just do one more example where I'll put in a bit depth of 3 and that number 3, if you raise 2 to the power of 3, that's 2 times 2 times 2, that gives you 8 possibilities. So that's 8 different shades of gray that are possible with a bit depth of 3. And we can keep going down the list. With 4, it would be 2 to the 4, or 16, and so on and so on. Now, typically for grayscale images, it really doesn't make sense to go beyond 2 to the power of 8. So 2 to the power of 8 would be a bit depth of 8. 2 to the power of 8 would give you 256 different shades of gray. And 256 different shades of gray, the difference between adjacent gray levels is just about at the limit of our human perception. In other words, we can't really distinguish much more than 256 different shades of gray. So it really doesn't make sense to go beyond that as far as bit depth is concerned. So um, <clears throat> well, let's just go back to looking at a bit depth of 3. And the question may be asked, since there are 8 different unique codes for the shades of gray, it comes about from grouping 3 bits together. So we know that the first number on the list would be 0, 0, 0, taking 3 bits together. And the final one would be 1, 1, 1. I'll leave you to figure out what the others are, other 6. Okay, so we could go to 0, 0, 1 as one option, and so on. So that's an exercise in um, trying to figure out the eight unique numbers. We're not computers, so it's not crucial. The relationship I want you to remember is, as your bit depth increases, your contrast scale lengthens. So contrast scale gets longer. Uh, we have to be, at this point, be sure of what contrast scale is referring to. So we get long scale contrast with increased bit depth. Now we can always adjust the contrast and levels, but the maximum scale of contrast is much higher with a higher bit depth. And the final thing we will look at is how does the bit depth and the matrix size influence the amount of memory required to save the image and the image size generally. So let's look at that in terms of the number of pixels and the bit depth in combination. Now, if we have a typical 2x2 two two matrix, we can right away see that there are 4 pixels. And as we increase, this is a 2x2 two two matrix, as we increase the matrix to now 4x4, four four, we have 16 pixels. So the number of picture elements or pixels increases as the matrix size increases. So just for comparison, 
The 2x2 two two matrix requires less memory than the 4x4 four four matrix just based on pixel number of pixels alone. There's also another consideration because remember we also have to consider our bit depth and our bit depth determines how many shades of gray a particular pixel can display. So if we use the standard 8 as our bit depth and remember from the previous session that will give us 256 possible values of gray. So if our bit depth is 8 we get 256 different gray values. The formula that is used to calculate the amount of memory required is matrix multiplied by bit depth is the amount of memory required to save an image. And the matrix in this particular case is the full matrix, both numbers together. So let's say we had a 256 by 256 matrix with a bit depth of 8. This would be our matrix combination here and this would be our bit depth. And the answer we would get by multiplying these two numbers together would be the amount of memory required in bits. And a bits, of course, stands for binary digits. But we do not see memory listed in bits too often. Typically, we see memory listed in bytes. We see memory listed in kilobytes. We see it listed in megabytes. Often we see it listed in gigabytes. And nowadays we're even going to what we refer to as terabytes. T-E-R-A bytes. Now the big question is what's the relationship between all these different terms? And it's very important to us because we're going to be needing to have this information to do our calculations. Yes, there's some calculations involved. So let's look at the first relationship. The relationship between bits and bytes. It takes 8 bits for 1 byte. You group 8 bits together, you get 1 byte. It takes not 1,000, right? But 2 to the power of 10 bytes equals to 1 kilobyte. Remember, we are dealing with binary. So it's very important that we, even though it has the term kilo attached to it, it's not the standard kilo like we would find in regular physics. This is now binary. So we have to look at 2 raised to the power of 10 bytes equals 1 kilobyte.